What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to another short video looking at some tips and tricks for the EOS R5. So in this video, I'm not sure if this would be really be considered a tip or a trick, but it is a discussion about a phenomena that you may see with your camera, why it's happening, what the conditions are, and what you need to be sort of aware of in dealing with this. So what I'm talking about today is the warning message that will appear on the rear of the LCD or the rear LCD of the camera when you turn it off that says something to the effect of keep the lens cap on after you turn the camera off. So what is this all about? What's the deal here? I mean, it baffled me coming to the EOS R because I had never seen a warning message like this on any other camera I have owned from Canon, including EOS M's, so mirrorless cameras, uh, DSLRs, whatever. So uh, what's this all about and what causes this to come up with? Because the other thing that baffled the crap out of me was I'd see it and then sometimes I wouldn't see it and I thought maybe it got removed in a firmware update or whatnot. Well, no, that's not the case. The actual case that this is that causes this to show up or maybe more succinctly, the case that causes this not to show up is if you have an RF lens mounted on your camera. So when you have an RF lens mounted on the camera, you will not see this message or you should not see this message. If you're using an EF lens on a mount adapter, any other kind of lens on a manual mount adapter or no lens at all, just the body cap, you will see this message, it will pop up uh, on your camera. So what's the point of this? Why is it there? Well, basically this comes down to, it's there as a reminder to help you protect the shutter and sensor in the camera. So to understand what's going on here, let's rewind a second and talk about DSLRs. So if you remember in a DSLR, when the camera's in its default state, so when you're not taking a picture, you're not in live view, the shutter's closed in front of the sensor and then there's a mirror that's lowered in front of the shutter itself. Now, that configuration essentially means that basically no light is being focused or reaching the shutter, let alone the sensor. I mean, no light's meet reaching the sensor because the shutter's closed. Now, obviously mirrorless cameras are different. They don't have a mirror. It's right there in the name. So with a, with a mirrorless camera, what happens is all of the light that the lens passes through when the ap you know, aperture's open or closed or whatnot, reaches, is, is essentially falling on the shutter mechanism, the shutter blades or the sensor. Now, remember of course that to keep excess or stray light from bouncing around in the camera shutter blades are tend to, uh, as well as almost everything inside the camera tends to be colored black either painted or coated or however it's done uh and of course black things as anybody who's you know had a black car or wore a black shirt out on a hot sunny day knows are really good at absorbing basically all length length wavelengths of light and absorbing all the light that falls on it, which means it gets hotter faster and it gets hotter, you know, from less light. So yes, in a DSLR, obviously the focusing screen is going to always have light shining on it. The AF sensor is going to have some light shining on it. Uh, but in these cases, well, the focusing screen has 40% less than the full light that the lens can provide because the, the 60, 40 cut of the mirror uh, but it's also largely transparent, so it's not really going to absorb an awful lot of the light hitting it as just heat. Uh, likewise, the AF sensor is going to have light shining on it potentially all the time, but it's 60% of the light going into the camera gets cut by the mirror, deflected through the viewfinder. So only 40% of the light going into the, you know, passing through the lens gets to the AF sensor. And obviously that's something that it can be designed to sort of deal with. Now, in a mirrorless camera, you don't have, the, these advantages aren't there. So you essentially have black shutter curtains or the sensor itself. And not only that, but they're essentially the focal point of where the lens is focusing light. I mean, obviously if you want sharp pictures, you want the, the lens has to focus the light on the sensor. And so the shutters are sort of right there in harm's way. So that focused light on a black shutter blade can do a couple of things. First of all, it could just distort it, heats it up locally enough that it warps and distorts and causes the shutter mechanism to not open or not work properly. Uh, it could also potentially scorch or burn 
the, the shutter blades, depending on how much light, how much heat, how much, you know, how focused it is, is, is going on as well. Now there are, these are metal shutter, shutter blades, but you know, you put enough heat or put enough energy into it and metal melts just fine. They are very thin. They are very light. Um, likewise, if you have your camera configured not to close the shutter on power off, that light's being focused on the sensor. And that's the whole same process. Localized heating can damage potentially the uh, color filters. It could damage potentially the micro lens structure. It could damage potentially the sensor itself. I mean, after all, uh, Sony just recently, as of the time of recording this video, has put out a, a press release reminding photographers of the dangers of uh, laser light and camera sensors, that it can damage camera sensors. And of course, there's been numerous instances on uh, various web forums, discussion boards, photo magazines of people showing cameras that have been damaged by shooting at concerts with lasers and laser light that the laser just passed over the sensor and then fried part of the circuitry. Now, natural light probably isn't going to do that as quickly because it's not going to be as intense and as uh, focused as a laser light would be. Uh, but you could imagine very easily a situation of a camera that's pointed at the sun or light reflecting off of a surface from the sun directly that's you know constantly falling on a very focused spot on the sensor that could in turn cause that kind of damage. So what does Canon do to protect the sensors? Uh, and this goes back to well, why does the RF lenses not show this anth warning? And it comes down simply to RF lenses have been designed so that when you turn the camera off, the camera stops the lens down. Now, I did some testing with the two RF lenses that I have access to right now, which is the 24-70 f2.8L and the 24-105 f4L. And in both of those cases, the lens would stop down three stops, or, or as close to three stops as I can tell, which would reduce the amount of light that the lens lets reach the sensor by a factor of eight, or down to 12.5% of the original light, light, the maximum light that can be passed through. I should add, as I just thought of this as I was recording this, that if you have the non, uh, the fixed aperture lenses, the 600 f11, the 800 f11, I don't know what the situations are with those. They may display the warning or not. Uh, f11 is in the neighborhood of, an, or an f11 aperture is in the neighborhood of where most of the RF lenses that I see are stopping down to. So they may be inherently stopped down enough that you don't get the warning. Uh, if you have uh, one of those lenses and you're watching this video, please throw in the comments whether you see this warning or not, as I'd really like to know. So then the next question is, uh, why don't, why don't they do this with EF lenses? And again, this is the thing I have no I no real idea. In theory, they certainly could. They could stop down an EF lens, just command it to you know stop down, turn the power off. The problem with EF lenses in talking about this is, as an armchair camera engineer, is I don't like everybody else out there who would potentially weigh in on this have access to internal documentation from Canon. So the EF lens design standard has never been a publicly available thing. All of the companies that either make EF mount ca compatible cameras or that make EF mount compatible lenses have arrived at controlling and communicating with the lens or camera as, you know, via reverse engineering. So they find what works, they have something that appear, appears to work properly, but it may simply just not reflect all of the nuances of the exact design details in Canon's internal documentation. So it's entirely possible that there's just something in the design documentation for the EF lenses that says the lens must be, you know, left at the maximum aperture on power down, and without retesting all the lenses and re rewriting the design documentation, retesting all the lenses and so forth. Uh, it's just anything done internally at Canon that conforms to the EF mount is going to conform to that design thing. As well, it could also be that they're using shared software with the EOS DSLRs. I mean, they have 
30 plus, uh, almost 40 years of uh, camera software, essentially for talking to EF lenses, the EF communication protocol, already written and in their code base in any intelligent company or even remotely intelligent company doesn't completely rewrite the software for their cameras or their products every time a new product comes out. You take what you already have and you reuse that. So it may just be that because this is not something that DSLRs ever needed to do, DSLR is the code was never written in that code base for DSLRs and therefore the uh, code being carried over to the EOS R's doesn't have it or can't do it. Well, doesn't do it. And of course, there could be some entirely different problem that we have no idea, I, like I have no insight into at all. Like the uh, aperture stops on EF lenses, because they're not designed or intended to be stopped down all the way or, or, or when the lens is powered down or generally as a light protection feature, could be more prone to overheating or warping or malfunctioning under those conditions, in which case stopping the lens down you know, could cause a malfunction. Whereas it's pretty clear with RF lenses that the aperture is designed to be this kind of protective feature. Okay, so what should you do about this? Now, I'm not going to say to ignore this. I don't think that's a smart thing to do as a person who's giving advice, and I don't think it's a smart thing to do as a photographer with a really expensive ca camera. That said, it's pretty obvious that not all warnings and procedures that camera companies give out have to be followed to the letter to not prevent the, or to have the system work. Most camera manufacturers have, for as long as I can remember, told you to ha you had to turn the power off when you changed lenses. Uh, in fact, Canon was probably the only company that didn't have that explicitly written in the manuals for their cameras at, uh, up until just about four or five or six years ago. That said, I don't know a single photographer who, at least not until recently or until the move to mirrorless cameras, ever really paid any attention to that. The, everybody I know, including myself with DSLRs, would just change lenses and go on shooting and never mess with the power. And this could very much be that kind of situation. Here's a warning. It's kind of covering their rear kind of thing. You don't have to pay that much attention to it, but it's there so that, you know, that it's there. So what my recommendation here basically comes down to use common sense. Uh, this is what I do. So I don't rigidly follow this warning to, to cap my lens every time I turn the camera off. Uh, I kind of think a little bit about what's going on, because as far as I can tell, it's going to be a product of or a consideration with respect to, to light and heat getting to the, the sensor or the shutter mechanism. So if I'm shooting indoors and not like in a concert or something like that where you have lasers or whatever, but like just a studio, an office, a house, that kind of thing, I'm not going to worry about it too much. If I'm shooting outside at night, I'm not going to worry about it too much. Uh, if I'm shooting in a situation where I have active control over where the camera's pointing, I'm not going to worry about it. So again, like if I'm, even if I'm outside in the day and I'm shooting, say, wildlife photography, if my camera's on a tripod and it's pointed at a tree that the, with the sun behind me, I'm not going to like, you know, I'll turn my camera off to save battery power and I'm not going to worry about putting a, a lens cap on the lens every time I do that. I will, on the other hand, cap the lens when I could be pointing it at a very bright light source, either inadvertently or maybe not so inadvertently uh, for any kind of extended period of time, or I just don't have real control over it. So if I'm walking around hiking or whatever with a camera on a camera strap and it's bouncing all over the place and pointing in every direction, I'm probably going to put a lens cap on it. Even, especially like hiking and whatever, I might not even be for protecting the sensor. It's really almost going to be for to protect the front of the lens. Uh, but that kind of thing, I'm going to put a lens cap on it. And so, like I said, just use some common sense. Don't go like, I, I don't think this is something you have to go super religious over the top on or completely ignore. I think it's a, 
a, a smart thing to do with the lenses that trigger that warning. So basically EF lenses. With RF lenses, you don't get the warning. It's, I don't think, a problem at all to leave them uncapped the way you would maybe with a DSLR lens on a DSLR. So with all that said, if you found this useful, insightful, or at least a little bit informative, maybe please consider smashing that like button. Also, please consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.